but I am a trusted. Amazing myths and legends are in abundance in Asian culture. While some of this has been explored through horror and fantasy dramas, none of us have really taken the reins and created an entire living, breathing world around it. That is, until Trace, a six-episode Filipino gem. Trace, a smartly written, exciting action romp that blends elements of sci-fi action and crime drama, leaves you wanting more even after the credits roll. Dabi Dabi Po. Trace is a show set in the heart of Manila that explores a world in which the shadowy underworld coexists with the world as we know it. The daytime is fine, but at night, the shadows come out to play. This loose alliance, which was formed in the past by a man named Anton, is weakening under the weight of restless dark forces. Alexandra Trace, Anton's daughter, serves as a link between the two worlds. According to legend, she is the sixth child of the sixth child, a girl born to unite the realms and rule over the underworld. For the time being, she's content with her role as an earthly detective. Trace's best fantasy realism crossovers nail the gritty energy and sprawl of Manila, making the anime feel more natural and magical. Humans are kept as pets by dwarfish earth elementals. Lightning elementals own and run power companies, their hands and eyes crackling with raw energy. And Kanto horses live in densely forested headquarters perched atop high-rise buildings. Even monsters need an off-grid system to survive in this world, so the predatory Aswang monsters have their own wet market for illegal human meat. The Trace comics are known for their folklore elements in both the series' urban setting and story arcs. Those elements amp up the magical realism vibe in the anime. Alexandra Trace stands at the center of Trace, the best reaction to the madness of her Manila. Moody, sullen, and distrustful, she appears to be what any city-dwelling Filipino feels on a typical day, dressed in a Chinese cut trench coat and ready to fight at the drop of a centavo. As a supernatural detective who is also the enforcer of the accords between the human and supernatural realms, she is a joy to watch. Trace is engulfed in all manner of supernatural spookiness over the course of these six episodes, from zombie invasions to feral goblins and even a murdered ghost. The ideas are well presented, imaginative, and the voice cast does an excellent job acting them out. Trace is a well-written series and one of Netflix's better animated releases this year. The world is fed up by the unique aesthetic and clever use of myths and legends. Trace definitely deserves a sequel based on this performance, but whether the show does so or not remains to be seen. For the time being, Trace has a solid six episode run that is well worth watching. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Episode 1 Trace's first episode begins in Manila, where we learn more about the city's secrets. During the day, everything seems fine, but at night, the shadows become darker and more agitated. It turns out that humans have been protected from all the supernatural underworld by a treaty. Unfortunately, things are starting to fall apart. The light forces are dwindling, with Alexandra Trace remaining the only bright spot of hope. For a long time, her family has served as a link between the light and the dark, straddling the thin line that separates the two states. Trace has big shoes to fill now that Alexandra's father, Anton, has passed away. Trace sets out to find answers after train passengers go missing and a dead ghost, the White Lady, is used as a sacrifice. This brings her face to face with Nuno, a sewer-dwelling goblin, and the Aswang clan's leader, both of whom point to a corrupt official involved with Mermaid's bones. The White Lady is probably the most well-known of Trace's supernatural inhabitants. Almost every country has an urban legend about a female ghost dressed in a white gown. The most famous White Lady in the Philippines is the White Lady of Balete Drive. Fans of the supernatural will recognize her story. One fateful night on Balete Drive, a woman was killed in a car accident. Several years later, she continues to haunt taxi drivers in the middle of the night. According to other reports, People driving down the street late at night may catch a glimpse of her in their rear view mirror before she vanishes. According to reports, she has been involved in several accidents on Balete Drive. Tell them to go away. 
or I swear you'll have taken your last breath. With elections approaching, Mayor Santa Maria tries everything he can to make these deaths work in his favor. He is, however, the one who is involved. Trace tries to build a case against him, given that the ghost was actually his mistress and that he reveals information about the Aswan clan. I never said anything about Aswan, Mr. Mayor. This includes inspecting the train cars. There appears to be two trains, one in the realm of the living and the other in the realm of the dead. The Aswan clan took the dead passengers from the train as we will soon discover. Show me where they were killed. As you wish. Trace is dispatched to save those unfortunate souls, which leads her to their leader, Zamul. Trace is joined by Crispin and Basilio, who arrive wearing masks and wielding dual pistols, given the odds being stacked against her. This is enough to turn the tables on the caged humans and save them all. Mayor Santa Maria is definitely involved, according to eyewitnesses. They also reveal information about the Aswan clan, confirming that they were responsible for Trace's mother's death. We called out to him for help, but he ignored us. Once he This is enough to warrant the mayor's arrest. The goddess of death appears with an ominous message as Trace returns home. The court of death wants to be in the good books of the sixth child of the sixth child when she takes her rightful place in the underworld. Tracy appears to be that child. She, on the other hand, ignores the call to action and instead answers a call from the police captain. Episode 2. Trace A2 opens with a slick black and white flashback of a woman showing up at a strip club and completely cleaning the place out. The bodyguard's hearts are cut out and a bloody crime scene is left in their wake. The victims are actually members of the infamous skeleton crew and it appears that this is a revenge killing. And the power I'm looking for. You can't give. Anton and a young Alexandra arrive at the scene. The Sigbin's officers who are accompanying Anton are actually Sigbins. They change their appearance and begin following the scent. These creatures known as Sigbins are familiars. They take on many different appearances depending on their master's needs. But in some regions, they frequently resemble dogs, which is the version Trace follows. Ramona is the woman behind everything, and she's the leader of a band of rebels who have been murdering clan members for months. Anton warns the colonel that he might be next, but he's too invested in the bottle, believing Ramona will kill him soon. Actions. If she is coming for you, then let her come! Alexandra arrives with her men at the scene of a car accident in the present. But this isn't just any crash. The winner's car has vanished, and there are hoof prints on the route. Trace follows the clues to a lavish skyscraper, despite the lack of a trace and a body, as well as two eyewitnesses who claimed the driver had real horsepower. She arrives to see Senor Almanaz, who welcomes her inside. Trace extends her greetings to this magnificent stallion, who also happens to be Lord of the Tikbalang. These humanoid horses, according to Filipino folklore, prefer to live in remote mountains and forests. Alexandra meets Senor Armanaz in a penthouse that resembles an indoor jungle. They're known for playing pranks on tourists. Your father would be proud to see you walking in his foot. Nuno is Alexandra's elderly supernatural informant in Trace. Nuno Sapunso, a natural spirit who takes the form of an old man who lives in a mound of dirt, is his inspiration. Nuno Sapunzo are prone to becoming enraged and vindictive, so this is an excellent opportunity to follow Alexandra's lead and say Tabi Tabi Po. Tabi Tabi Po. Otherwise, you risk twisting your ankle or having your foot swell like a balloon as a result of intruding on his territory. Trace's Nuno isn't technically a Nuno Sapunso, he's the Nuno Samanhol because he lives in a sewer rather than a mound of dirt. You're essentially saying excuse me to any spirits who may be nearby when you say tabi tabi po. When you're traveling through places where supernatural beings might live such as a field, a mound of dirt, a tree, or a riverbank, you say this. You do this to avoid offending these spirits who can be easily offended if you aren't respectful or acknowledge their presence. Failure to say tabi tabi po may result in you becoming ill, developing a fever, or suffering from other ailments. Even if you don't believe it, it's one of those things you just say regardless. Why take the chance? Episode 3. Trace's third episode begins in the past, with more information about Ramona and her tribe. The skeleton crew's commanding officer is tortured and fed the hearts of his men. The blood ritual appears that it's about to begin, prompting Anton to enlist the assistance of the War Council. 
It's just that it's not good. Ramona is successful in reuniting with her husband, but he's not who she thought he was, and he transforms into the god of war, threatening to kill the kids with a knife. Back in the present, Trace and the boys are called to investigate a gruesome murder in a parking lot. Dr. Petra is the victim's name. She is a dermatologist who owns and operates a number of successful clinics throughout the city. The assailant also left tracks that led to the sewers. A nightmare. I wouldn't worry, Captain. We've got this covered. Trace enlists the help of a ghost named Jobert, who confirms that Dr. Petra was on the phone with Nova Aurora, a well-known actress. As it turns out, they've been friends since childhood, and Petra is the president of her fan club. Trace travels to Among Paso, elder of the Red Earth tribe, in order to learn more. Among Paso is a duende and one of the Trace family's oldest allies. While duende and Nuno Sapunso are both earth spirits, they are not the same. They're more like irrational little goblins. They have the power to bring you good fortune. They also have the ability to serve you a heaping helping of bad luck. They can also simply steal your belongings, hide them, and then mock you when you try to locate them. It seems appropriate that a duende would assist a woman in becoming a well-known actress in Trace, even if it means sacrificing some things along the way. Aurora is also present, sobbing, and claims to have seen red eyes inside the structure, which has alarmed her. This creature turns out to be a feral goblin, and it's calling out to Aurora. On the hunt later in the episode, Aurora drops to her knees and waits for the creature to approach. Aurora stabs the creature repeatedly with a knife, soaking herself in blood as it lets its guard down. Tianak is the name for this creature. Tianak are vampiric babies according to Filipino folklore. They cry like babies to entice unsuspecting victims. After all, babies are completely harmless. Isn't it true that they can't hurt you? The Tianak will transform and attack you if you pick up what appears to be an abandoned infant. Tianak are unborn children whose mothers died before giving birth, according to some legends. According to other stories, they are the spirits of children who died before being baptized. Your familiar left a defenseless baby to the elements and then killed a Chanak. Among thanks Trace for keeping Nova safe, but she isn't satisfied. Nova is the true monster, as this goblin was only acting on its host's instincts, and Trace warns Among not to cross her again. In exchange, it promises that a storm is brewing and that a traitor is among her ranks. But who could it be? Aurora is lying in bed at the end of the episode when a swarm of feral goblins appear and murder the girl. Episode 4 Trace Episode 4 opens with more flashbacks, with the young Anton and Alexandra facing off against Italic Buseo, who was summoned in the previous episode's blood ritual. Unfortunately, Anton is stabbed in the stomach as a result of his efforts, but Alexandra saves the day and manages to expel the creature from the source. There'll be more to come, Alexandra. We have to be ready. Datu, Talag Buseo, is a mythical being with the appearance of a human, albeit an immortal one capable of adapting the appearance of others. Prior to the introduction of Christianity, the early Filipinos, like, like many other ancient Western and Asian civilizations, believed in their own pagan gods. Talag Buseo is a myth from the Philippines' southern province of Bakidnon, and he represents the god of war. Guerrero returns to the station in the present, having learned of a massacre. Even worse, the morgue has 50 bodies missing. Trace prepares for the fight ahead, as the underworld stirs and the gloves come off. Trace decides not to summon the war council in the absence of Anton. Hank arrives to see Nuno, who confirms that something is brewing and that all of the underworld tribes are stockpiling muscle and magic. Worse yet, bodies are missing from the train and they're on their way to the precinct. It's a zombie apocalypse. Sit tight. Alexandra goes without her boys to quell the threat, using magic to locate a stone that could turn the tide of battle. He saves Captain Guerrero from certain death by enlisting the aid of San Telmo, the burning head. The large fireball that Alexandra summons with her cell phone is explained in a variety of ways. According to popular belief, San Telmo are the souls of the dead who have unfinished business. They could be out for vengeance. Perhaps they simply require assistance. They will sometimes pursue you. Hello, Santalmo. Hello, little. They may also deceive you into following them until you are completely lost. Ball lightning and luminous plasma are real weather phenomena, and Santelmo is most likely a supernatural explanation for them. That stone from before is in the stomach of a prisoner named Raul, who coughs it up and throws it on the ground. Trace brandishes her pistols and fires them into oblivion as she does so. 
As a result, the zombies vanish from view, thus she ends up saving the day. As the episode ends, Suicide Bomber detonates a bomb inside the bar where Among and Hank are sharing a drink. The town is shaken by the explosion. Episode 5. Tracey's fifth episode begins in the past, with the War Council reuniting. While worrying about the God of War's return, the various clans decide to form a union in order to maintain balance. Anton decides to take things a step further and teach the brothers what it means to be a family. This is due to the use of the masks we've seen before. We cut to the present where Mayor Santa Maria has found new life in prison. He's the boss around here, and he's rebuilding the prison as per his own wishes. Unfortunately, in doing so, he has declared war on the underworld, and the previous agreements will no longer be honored. Malixi approaches Trace and informs her that it is now every tribe for themselves, and that now is the time to call in any favors. Trace and her gang will be in big trouble as a result of this. Among Paso made the ultimate sacrifice to save Hank, who is currently recovering in the hospital. The mayor's black magic, Kulam, and dealings with the Aswang all seem to indicate that he is not the puppet master, but rather a puppet. There appears to be a higher power at work here, but who is it? Kulam, like Tabi Tabi Po, is not a supernatural being. It's black magic performed by witches in this case. It is very important to remember that Kulam only targets people who have done something wrong. According to legend, Kulam does not work on people who are not guilty. The Aswang is the most well-known monster in the Philippines. It's more of a label we give an entire family of monsters than a name for one type of supernatural creature. When Alexandra goes through the ritual trial at the Balete Tree in Trece, a group of Aswang confront Anton. The ghouls who have formed organized gangs throughout Manila and traffic humans are the first type of Aswang we meet in Trece. Balete trees aren't monsters either, but they do have a special place in Filipino mythology. Strangler figs are what we call them. Balete, like other strange figs, encircles and eventually kills host trees. However, in Filipino folklore, they're home to a variety of supernatural beings, such as Tikbalang and Diwana. They could also be used for magical rituals as seen in Trece. The white lady living on Balete Drive was named after a Balete tree that used to grow on the street. Trece goes to the prison to persuade General Villar to let her inside so she could speak with the mayor. However, another explosion rocks the prison as the mayor leads his men out and deploys more bombs. Unfortunately, whatever the mayor's body is made of has contaminated all the soldiers' food, turning all of the guards against one another. Trace finally confronts the mayor, who confirms the new connections he's made, including Nuno. He's the one who's been involved in the bombings, and that goes back a long way. He had originally requested to be a member of the War Council, but was humiliated after he was turned down. This is his long-form revenge game. The mayor and Nuno's rock golems, Laman Lupa, are pitted against Team Trace. Laman Lupa is a Filipino folklore term that refers to a family of earth elementals. Nuno Sapunso and Duende would be types of Laman Lupa according to this definition. Laman Lupa, on the other hand, refers to the mud elementals that Nuno summons for protection in Trace. Trace triumphs and once again employs her fiery Santelmo to thwart the threat. That isn't the end of it though. From behind, General Villar appears, promising Trace that she will now face her true destiny. Suddenly, the God of War appears, ready for the final battle. <laughs> episode 6 Trace Episode 6 begins with flashbacks to the past, just like the previous episodes. Crispin and Basilio fight over the masks. Trace interrupts things, but Anton shows up and reminds them that they're family. Trace, on the other hand, is dissatisfied and questions her father's motives. In the present, Telagbuseo is pitted against Trace and her brothers. With both worlds in jeopardy, humans and tribes band together to defeat their adversaries. Unfortunately, the God of War is able to control his children and turn them back to his side proving the bond of blood is stronger than family. As the truth is finally revealed, the masks clatter to the ground symbolically. Talag Buseo lets things play out his way, using his children as his eyes and ears, secretly serving as the puppet master and bringing Trace to her fate in plain sight. By the prophecy, the court of death would like to be in her good That fate dates back to the prophecy we heard at the beginning of the season. The sixth child of the sixth child Trace is destined to upset an old balance between the underworld and the earth. 
For a long time, it has been predicted that both worlds, the supernatural and the world of men, will be destroyed. Anton defiled the odds and decided to join forces with the supernatural forces to try to stop it. But you can't stop fate. Anton had been avoiding the truth for a long time, but now it is crashing down around him. Alexandra is Tracy's sister. Alexandra is the same Alexandra we've seen in flashbacks. Tracy's parents had their fifth and sixth children respectively. The prophecy predicted that one child would conquer and the other would bring balance. Anton, on the other hand, was deceptive, lying about the prophecy and his own children. Alex's destiny is to commit genocide, killing everyone and starting the cycle all over again. Kill your sister and turned her into this. She, on the other hand, refuses to listen to Talik Buseo, refusing to be swayed by this deity and instead choosing to do what she believes is right. She even reminds God that she is a Trace and that family is stronger than blood. Trace manages to persuade the brothers to support her cause in an instant. Alexandra banishes the deity and saves the day by using dragon's blood and stealing the knife from Talik Buseo. Girl, I will not be imprisoned again. It's done, Talik Trace finds herself staring at the familiar tree from the past after disappearing through a portal and being spat out on the other side. The camera pans up as she looks out the window as she says, we're home, Alex. We cut down to the docks during the post credit sequence where two workers are killed and doused in blood. As the camera pans up, we see Trace's sister sitting outside, gazing at the skyline. She grins and says the word, Trace. Netflix is yet to renew the animated series for a second season, but the Mandirig Mang Babylon has a bright future ahead. The animated series made it into the top 10 TV shows list on Netflix in 19 countries just three days after its release. Trace is the first Filipino comic to be adapted for Netflix. As a result, it's no surprise that the adaptation topped Netflix's top 10 in the Philippines. Furthermore, there is still a substantial amount of source material available. Only the first three volumes of the original comic series were adapted in the first season. Given Netflix's commitment to adapting Asian stories, season two of Trace is very likely to be approved. Hopefully the second season won't take as long as the first. Season 2 could arrive in mid-2022 or earlier if the anime is renewed soon. Season 1's conclusion perfectly sets up the events of Season 2. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.